Now, I have been doing Duolingo, which is a language learning app, for 1,427 days straight. Now, that's not actually straight, but that's how long my streak is. Occasionally, I'll miss a day, and then I've got this streak freeze thing, which is kind of a bonus because I've been doing it for so long. But that's a long streak to maintain, and clearly, I've been able to maintain a habit of doing this every morning, which raised the question for me the other day, how do we shape habits that can be so long-lasting like that? Now, one of the reasons this question came up for me is because one of my friends lamented the fact that she was unable to have that same kind of dedication or that same kind of habit formed for her to do her daily devotions. And I had suggested that maybe if the devotional apps contained the same kinds of rewards that these other language learning apps kind of do, where they keep a streak and they give you these little stickers that you can share with others along the way, that maybe there would be a bonus and a benefit to that and that would help to form a habit. And she noted and she sent me a screenshot that had some of these same things and I was totally intrigued because I have found over time that there's a certain structure to forming habits. Now this structure actually comes from the book called The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. And he suggests that every habit has three parts. First, there's a cue. There's a trigger that tells your brain that it's time to start a habit and to go and do things. And so for me with Duolingo, or now that I've switched into doing the same kind of thing with a devotional app, there's a notification. And it's one that you can set yourself sometimes that's a timer that says, okay, at this time of day, I want this cue, this notification notification. And so there's a cue. There's something that tells you, hey, it's time to start your routine. The second part that he says is that there is an actual activity of a habit. There's the routine itself. Uh, whether this is physical, emotional, moral, spiritual, or cognitive, any of these kinds of things. There's some kind of a cue. There's some suggestion that says, hey, this is time to do something. And then there's an actual routine you go through. And then following that, there's some kind of reward for that. There's feedback at the end of the habit that helps to tell your brain that that habit was worth engaging in. So there's a cue, there's a routine, and there's some kind of reward. And it actually turns out, or Charles suggests, that one of the best ways to start a new habit is to replace an old habit, to maintain the cue and the reward, but just to change the routine itself. So for example, if you want to drink less coffee, then maybe at breakfast you would drink water or juice instead of coffee. So you have the same cue, it's breakfast time, you're getting up in the morning, you're starting to get going, and there's a reward, you get to have a drink with your meal, and you become full and then you can move on with the rest of your day but the actual routine gets changed. Now when my friend shared with me the fact that there was an opportunity to have a Bible app that would track my daily devotions and maybe find the same kinds of rewards that I had with Duolingo, I was hooked. Now I'm still trying to find a good place to do it. I'm trying to figure out which routines I can replace with this one because I don't want to change uh, some of my other routines but by the same token this has been really beneficial for me. It's amazing how how much these little kinds of rewards that are given to me along the way actually encourage me to do so. And maybe the same thing could be true for you. If you're thinking about trying to start a new routine, maybe daily devotions by yourself, try to figure out what other routines aren't as valuable to you. It's not as though they're invaluable, although sometimes we do have bad habits that need to be replaced, but maybe find one that would be better managed with a devotional time, a personal devotional time, and then replace the actual routine that you do with devotions, but still keep the same cue and maybe the same reward. If you've been able to add personal devotions to your routine, how have you been able to do so? And a better question for, for me, uh, to provide me with some understanding of when this might be the best place to do it, how and when have you been able to do it? What kinds of routines did you replace with this personal devotional time?